Hello everybody. I'm back in Kollam. When you as soon as you hear all these birds chirping in the background and and uh, all the greenery. I mean right now there's no greenery around me but when you see all that it is Kollam and nowhere else, you know. And you know why I love to be here? I mean besides being with Amma, Devika and Pradeep and that is of course the key attraction is also the fact that I get to sleep in the afternoons. I know it's Tuesday today and um you know, I never get to sleep at home. I mean, when I'm in Delhi, I never get to sleep in the afternoons. Here I had my lunch and as soon as I walked in, there was so much activity happening in um, in the front yard that I had to capture it on camera. And I said, this is my next day. I mean, today's uh, video clipping, you know, and I decided this is it. But I took all my little clips and then I had my lunch and went off to sleep like a log. You know what? Being in Kollam, of course, um, Amma, Devika, Pradeep around me, I just feel so much at home and I am home. Home is where the heart is, right? And um, as we speak now, Pallavi is on a flight in Goa back to Delhi because work calls her. But also the whole family has been through such a traumatic time because um, she was caught up in this disaster that happened to those six kids, five kids who fell off the first floor and two girls injured their back. I remember I posted on that. So one had an operation yesterday, spinal operation yesterday, one tomorrow. And um, the one that already went through operation, she can feel some sensation in her feet. And I pray and hope to God that they have the strength to pull through this. I don't know why these things happen, but it does. And, and um, I know Pallavi wanted to stay back till everything was done, but she's on a flight back. So anyway, so so all of us are a little calmer, with prayers in our hearts for the families and the two girls. And anyway, I'm back in this paradise. Look at that. Look around me. Look at that. How beautiful is it? And look at this, Devika has got this whole land filled up, right? It's all filled up. Before it was only halfway there. And remember I posted where there were like these 40 little baby um, coconut trees that she was planning to plant. And I was like, every household in Kerala has at least five coconut trees. And that yields uh, coconuts and everything else that what each household needs. But this land has so many and I was like, Devika, why do we need so many coconuts? And she has her own story to tell. Let's get her to talk now. So that, uh, so that remains from the 40 coconuts saplings that she had. And I don't know if you remember this, but this whole place was marshy and so it's quite a mess actually. She's done a full on landfill. And the only things that you see right now are little baby coconut trees. And that of course is our um, Tamara Kolam. And yes, I've got Devika here. So Devika, I mean, we've got so many coconuts over here, no? So many coconuts. Yeah. Why? So many more coconut trees. We need coconuts for everything from hair oil to uh, cooking oil and even to, they say a spoon of co uh, virgin coconut oil every day is good for the body and the mind. So I thought why not coconuts, it's in big demand now and we've never got a coconut in our lives. So uh, maybe increase the production and we can have our own coconut oil which we are drying in the yard right now and then the husk can be used for firewood, it's used for coir, carpets and ropes and everything. And uh, even this new rage that has come out called Meera, which is the nectar of the coconut blossom. You know, I just love it. I, it was, it's the sweetest. I've never tasted anything sweeter it's like than nectar. that. nectar. It's actually called nectar. Yeah. Because it's so pure and so sweet. It's actually a nutrition and health drink. It's fabulous. So every little thing of the coconut palm we use. We use in our daily lives. And this is uh, what Kerala climate is good for. So I thought might as well do that. I'm really, really excited to see it when like when these are going to start fruiting. 
and yeah slowly <laughs> maybe even start an oil mill perfect uh, but, but didn't uh, didn't Anton have an oil mill yeah, right yeah, behind did. you actually at one but point but i'm looking towards a cold press maybe cold press oil because that is what is in demand now perfect we can get our own oil yes that's, that's the super aim. perfect let's just go up and see what is happening in the yard right now okay so you know they come so let's walk and do the talk okay <clears throat> You know, um, these coconut trees, I mean, we have just got so many coconut trees and who climbs these trees? Nowadays, there's nobody there to yeah, climb these difficult. trees, you know, maybe very, difficult. very difficult. And also, um, you were telling me about that contraption where women can also climb yeah, the trees. Yeah. Yeah. There are extensions onto your hips and on your hands and you're just climbing up like it's a ladder. So there'll come a time when housewives will be able to pluck their own coconuts. You don't have to depend on somebody else coming in. How oh, cool is that? I want to get on that. I want to fit that contraption on me and then climb up. Okay. But also these these trees are not going to grow too tall, no? No. It's not, not going to grow as tall as... It's not dwarf variety, but not very tall because it's supposed to start fruiting in two years. Okay, that's great. So that but so not as tall as what we, no, what we no, are no, no, looking no. at, right? Not as tall as these. Right? Yeah, not as tall as that. <laughs> that is like super tall. Okay, anyway, so also when you, uh, there are lots of, I mean, because we don't really get them plucked on time, there are a lot of coconuts that keep yeah, falling on the dry ones keep falling down, then the dry leaves keep falling down, all are falls down, and they say a coconut will never chadikya you. That means it'll, it'll never harm you. A coconut it'll will never, never fall on your head you, and harm you. Yeah. It'll fall like this in front of you, and it's, that's really scary. Yeah, I think one kind of fell by my side the other day <laughs> when I was talking about Achin. And I didn't get scared. <laughs> okay, anyway, so so the thing is, what's happening outside is we've got um, all the coconuts which have been dried. Um, they have husked in different it processes. in yeah. different different processes. They've husked it. They have cracked it. The the watchers, I mean my chalky does. They want extra job because they don't want to just keep opening the gate and shutting the gate. So they told Dinka, where are they willing to We can do the job. So they are actually sitting. And they are cracking it. They, uh, I mean, they did this in the morning. I, I'm, 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 I'm a little cheating a little here, <laughs> but I wanted to sleep in the afternoon. So we, I captured that in the morning, which I'm going to add to this little clip. Uh, so they have, what have they done? They've cracked it. They've, they've actually cracked it, thrown out the water, and they've dried it for three days in the shell. And uh, today they've been taking it out of the shell. Then they dry it again. So we are doing it in two, three processes. Process. We don't, don't want all the oil in one shot and then they uh, cut it into small pieces so then it dries faster okay and then and then you take it to the mill and they grind it for you and they give you the oil separately as cooking oil and they give you the rest of it the husk the, not no the, not the husk it's the, actually yeah it's the, just remains. the remains of the <laughs> coconut which you can use uh, for cow feed cow feed and maybe fertilizers also okay great so, uh, does every household do this? I mean, on their own? No, no, no. You need a large amount of coconuts because when they dry, they become half the amount, half right. the weight, and you need a certain weight for them to grind it for you separately. In the mill, huh? Yeah. Okay. So you have the man has to stand there to make sure that your coconuts are ground and given to you. Perfect. Otherwise, I mean, just put everything in together. Yeah. So, but it's great that you can actually make your own coconut. Oil. How cool is that? So let us just show you how that is done.
So this is Babu Ocha. He's the chalky dad here. One of the chalky guys. Babu Ocha. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Vara. Hello. <laughs> Babu Ocha, how are you doing this? I'm doing this. Wow. What are you doing? Are you doing this? Yes, I'm doing this. Yes, I'm doing this. Yes, I'm doing this. Look how fast his hand works. Suchiche, suchiche. You know, Pandake, there was this para that all of us had at home. <laughs> this thing that just stood straight down where we could actually podikify the coconuts. But now there's some pudya kandurutam which actually yeah, I want. This is for the women to do. I don't do this every day. <laughs> but I just want to show you how easy it is. This is a husk and that's the coconut shell inside. <laughs> ah, she's working her magic. So this is this uh, this endram is meant for women to do this yeah, at home, yeah, no? Yeah. Matil, yeah, you can just Matil so with that fire that only men could do this, right? Yeah. Yeah, That's it, brilliant. Actually. Yeah. Okay, now we'll break the coconut and show you the flesh inside. So, ye vellam kalayu ho. Kalayum, but you can drink it also. Really, it's, it's not like karikar do. It won't be tender. Yeah. But it definitely, definitely nutritional and tasty. Hey, yep, you, yeah, that's, that's fabulous. No, so then tell me, so th uh, these coconuts then, adane moonu devasam veile to chuve. I mean, yeah. you, you this dry it. We use uh, fresh in our curries and for coconut milk and thing. But like this, you put it in the sun for three days, and then it dries up. It dries like up. Like what we've just seen, right? Yeah. Okay, so now great. You'll be getting the rest of it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so that is fab, isn't it? I mean, it's amazing that you can make your own coconut oil. And uh, so all the remainings they can just show us, no? Yeah. So then we get the husk. Yeah. And we get the coconut shell. What and we, what uh, do we do? I mean, do we just chuck it, throw it, or what? No, we use it as firewood. It's not wood, but we use Fuel. it as a fire. Fuel, or no? Yeah. Okay. And great. then even these old big iron irons that the dobies use, they take the uh, coal of the of this shell and they use it. So they burn it first. So they the so every single bit of it is used. Yeah. But also, you know, Namada Vitla in our house, I don't know if it happens everywhere. But the red rice, no, the what we normally eat, all Malayalis eat, it takes forever to cook. Yeah. I mean forever. Kabi always says, Amma, this is like the white rice cooks in like no time and the red rice takes forever. Yeah. Amma, what is this? I said, It's it's like that only. <laughs> it's really tough to cook this. So in our house, we, are, we always cook it on top of a fire. We never put it on top of the gas because that whole gas kuti is going to get over like that yeah. if we cook the red rice every day on the gas kuti, you know. So it's amazing. So today we've taken this um, the husk, the and, the husk and the shell and we've gone and um, we uh, she's she's done it. And exactly, I'm going to show you exactly where we actually cook our rice for this household. It was so much fun today because we don't do it every day. <laughs> I mean, somebody else somebody does it. Somebody else does it, but today but we did it ourselves. Great fun. It's great and of fun. course, there's a visitor that uh, say hi to. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Great. I, I just love this whole this whole energy of being in Kuala. Bye-bye. Then the chore the idea. Sure. Ah. <laughs> Amazing. Tonda should be cooking only on this. 
Put the thunder and the chair, huh? Yeah. Look at the spectators. <laughs> okay. Okay. Someone's come visiting while we are doing this whole Outside, amazing Pandita Madhuri Lovely.